Barbie as the Princess and the Pauper, a storybook. Brought to you by Mattel. Story told by Barbie. Published by Golden Books, an imprint of Random House Children's Books. You should be looking at the first page, where Princess Annalise is in the palace. Turn the page when you hear this sound. Long ago, there was a pretty princess named Annalise. She grew up in a beautiful palace and was very happy. One day, the queen told her daughter that there was no longer any gold to take care of the people in the kingdom. If Annalise would marry the rich King Dominic, their kingdom would be saved. So Princess Annalise agreed. But she was really in love with her tutor, Julian. The next day, as Annalise and Julian were walking in the village, they heard the most beautiful singing. It was a girl who looked just like the princess. What is your name? Annalise asked. Erica, the girl replied. It's amazing, the princess said. Except for our hair color and this crown-shaped birthmark on my shoulder, we could be twins. <coughs> the princess learned that Erica had to pay off her parents' debt by working at Madame Carp's dress shop. Before saying goodbye, Annalise promised to have Erica sing at the palace one day. <coughs> Meanwhile, no one knew that the Queen's royal advisor, Preminger, had stolen the Queen's gold. His wicked plan was to marry Annalise and become king. But when Preminger learned the princess was going to marry King Dominic, he had Annalise kidnapped. He then told Julian and the Queen that Annalise had run away. Preminger hoped the Queen would be so grateful when he later returned the princess that she would let him marry her daughter. Julian didn't believe Preminger's story. He asked Erica to pretend to be Princess Annalise and help him uncover the truth. So with a blonde wig and some coaching, Erica learned how to walk, act, and dress like the princess. At the palace, Julian announced that the princess had returned. King Dominic and Erica soon fell in love. There's something about you, King Dominic said. You're honest and down to earth. You don't act like a princess. Erica wished she could tell the king the truth. But first, Julian had to find the real princess. <coughs> Meanwhile, Princess Annalise escaped from her captors and ran back to the palace. But in her dirty and torn clothes, the guards didn't recognize her and wouldn't let her in. Annalise went to Madame Carp's dress shop to see if Erica could help her. Madame Carp thought the princess was Erica. She put Annalise to work and locked her in the shop. When Preminger learned that the princess had escaped, he was furious. And when he saw Julian spying on him, he had the tutor captured and taken to the abandoned gold mine. Meanwhile, Princess Annalise tried to send a message to the palace from Madame Carp's shop. She tied her royal ring to one of Madame Carp's dress labels and attached it to the collar of her cat, Serafina. Take this to the palace, Princess Annalise instructed. When they see the label, it will lead them here. <coughs> Unfortunately, Preminger found Serafina first. He went to Madame Carp's shop and pretended to help Annalise. But instead of taking the princess to the palace, he took her to the abandoned gold mine. Princess Annalise found Julian there and quickly realized that Preminger was behind her kidnapping. Now I'm going to tell the Queen you've been in an unfortunate mining accident, and all I've found of you is your ring, Preminger said with a laugh. <laughs> then he blocked the entrance to the mine. Princess Annalise and Julian were trapped. At the palace, King Dominic offered Erica a beautiful engagement ring and asked her to marry him. But Preminger revealed that Erica was not the princess. 
His dog pulled off Erica's wig, revealing her dark hair. <gasps> and she has no royal birthmark, Preminger said. Take her to the dungeon. Holding up the princess's ring, the villain announced that Annalise was dead. The only way to save the kingdom was for the queen to marry him. Reluctantly, the queen agreed. Meanwhile, the princess and Julian were desperately trying to find a way out of the gold mine. Suddenly, Erica's cat Wolfie appeared and led them toward an opening. They tried to climb out, but it was too steep. As they rested, Annalise noticed some sparkling crystals. The mine was filled with valuable geodes. The kingdom would be saved, if they could escape. With new hope, Julian dislodged some of the rocks. Suddenly, water shot up like a geyser. That's the way out, shouted Annalise. The water filled the mine and lifted them up through a shaft to freedom. At the palace, King Dominic disguised himself as a guard so he could rescue Erica from the dungeon. Why are you saving me? Erica asked the king. I don't care if you're not the princess, King Dominic said. I like you for being who you are. I like you too, responded Erica. But there was no time to waste. The palace guards were right behind them. The king and Erica ran to his horse and rode off to safety. The wedding of Preminger and the queen was about to begin when Princess Annalise burst in. It's the imposter, Preminger exclaimed. No, Preminger, the princess said as she showed everyone the crown-shaped birthmark on her shoulder. I'm Princess Annalise, and I'm alive. Realizing that his evil plan was falling apart, Preminger jumped onto his horse and raced away. But Preminger's horse knew he was evil and galloped right back to the palace. Preminger was arrested and locked away forever. Annalise told her mother all about the valuable geodes they had found. The kingdom was saved. That spring, there was the most beautiful double wedding the kingdom had ever seen. Princess Annalise married Julian, and Erica married King Dominic. Serafina and Wolfie had many, many kittens together and they all lived happily ever after. <laughs>